Uh, my name is Anthony Dente. I'm the vice president of the Cobb Research Institute uh, in the United States. I'm also the uh, principal at Verdant Structural Engineers in Berkeley, California. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about me uh, and my work, uh, as well as the testing and the development um, and the implementation of our newly adopted um, Cobb Construction Building Code uh, in the International Residential Code, which is our uh, U.S.-based um, uh, prescriptive code. And, uh, you know, we, we you know how we like to claim international and, and world series uh, topics, uh, titles for our generally national uh, activities. But I'm going to start off with John Fordyce, uh, the founder of the Cobb Research Institute, uh, licensed architect. And he's going to tell you a bit about, um, uh, he's got a recorded presentation about the uh, kind of conception of the Cobb Research Institute and the pursuit to this code uh, that we're uh, so excited to have finally achieved. So I'm gonna pass it here to John and he's gonna take it away. Hi, my name is John Fordyce. I'm the director of the Cobb Research Institute. I'd like to present a short history of the Cobb code that I'm calling an odyssey to a Cobb building code. It is a series of slides telling you about the key events I went through towards the creation of the Cobb code. And now onward. Here's the timeline of the 25 years since I started this odyssey. There's a lot on this slide, maybe too much for you, the viewers to take in, in the time we have, maybe later if you revisit this story. So I've added the relevant years in the upper right of the odyssey title. Here is a small building workshop where I learned to make Cobb. It was a wonderful experience and in many ways a transformative experience. And as a result, I fell in love with Cobb. In addition to making Cobb and building with Cobb, we learned an appreciation of its social, cultural and environmental values. But there were two even bigger lessons. First, there was a lot of supposition to the structural approach taught and there were no proven Cobb building standards. And even bigger, Cobb had no building code and the workshop espoused the philosophy of building without permits. This I immediately saw as a problem. No permits for Cobb. From this 1995 workshop, I realized that teaching a negative Cobb philosophy towards building codes and permits would prevent widespread acceptance of Cobb, limit its use to illegal, isolated, and hidden locations. So in my hubris, I left the workshop with the conviction to correct this and create a Cobb building code. So here again is an early timeline of all, all this. Over the next three years, in the midst of my normal life as an architect, I started my self-appointed task of creating a Cobb building code. First writing a proposed comprehensive and scientific Cobb testing program. I followed that with a paper about what I saw I, I needed to be done to make the building code work for Cobb. Part of testing and, and the code dedicated where to test and what it would cost. For this, I talked to the UC Berkeley Earthquake Research Center and came up with a budget of $250,000. Later, I went to a natural building gathering at Nautica Lilies Cal Earth Research Center. I presented my thought about a Cobb code and the projected cost. The idea of a profession a well-paid approach to testing Cobb was not well received and the reaction was skeptical. I was striving to introduce the concept of the building code simply being a tool that like all tools would only work for the intended job if it was properly designed. And the existing code was not designed to work with natural building and in this case with Cobb. In 1998, the opportunity arose to assist in the construction of a small greenhouse. 
The site was a sloping backyard and the owner had a crew of enthusiastic, ex inexperienced potential cob builders who in preparing the site dug a big pit instead of the intended benched site, which resulted in a huge pile of earth. To compensate, we built a foundation of mortared broken concrete slab around the size of the pit and on the first foot of surrounding grade. <laughs> Upon this, we constructed this simple building. The wonderful takeaway was that when we were finished, we had a building and the pile of earth was gone. A wonderful lesson in building using local materials. Since that experience, when I see an excavated pile of earth, I now see a potential building. In the following years of 1998 through 2001, I was able to realize three more Cobb projects. But given the lack of proven Cobb structural standards, I needed to find some tested methods to assure I was creating safe buildings. This slide shows the progression of wall structural designs, which I derived based on the 1990 to 1996 Getty Adobe project research into methods of seismically stabilizing Adobe buildings. I adopted this research to build with Cobb and derive the following standards. These standards are the most useful for Cobb design, wall height thickness ratio of seven to one, reinforced perimeter foundation, bond beam, flexible best rigid okay, vertical ties from the foundation to the bond beam and a roof diaphragm. These standards were used and refined over the course of the following three projects. This was a small cob house built with a class K permit in Northern California, Mendocino County. Class K allows alternate construction so long as it carries an architect or engineer's stamp on the plans. The county had red tagged the owner's teepee on the site and was requiring a permitted structure. It was a good opportunity to be paid to design a cob project. The problem was I was seen by the owner as an inconvenience to solve an impediment. Consequently, the owner ignored important structural parts of the design and in the end did not pay my full fee. But it was a good experience nevertheless. My next project was this 112, 120 square foot cob shed in a community garden in Berkeley, California. It was a devotional all volunteer construction project that took two and a half years of Saturdays. It was a chance to use the Getty derived seismic stability standards personally. It was very rewarding to create this beautiful structure as an example of, to the future of what can be done. The succession of photos illustrates the process of making a cob building. Success, the success of the garden, oh, sorry, um, the success of the garden shed project led to this experimental small sprouting shed in a school garden. It was an opportunity, opportunity to refine the use of the Getty research derived stability standards. The major improvements were the use of 3 8 inch smooth rebar vertical ties and a segmented wood bond beam embedded in the top of the cob wall. It was a very successful project. This project arose from permit, exempt, from permit exemptions allowed by most US building codes for structures of 120 square feet or less. It was an experiment in designing a small passive solar dwelling that could be constructed without a building permit. The design was intended to use the same seismic stability methods in the prior three structures. Here is a timeline for the period of 2008 to 2017, in which I was able to form the Cobb Research Institute. It was a long time coming and has been worth the effort. The important steps were 
First, the Cobb Code public first Cobb Code public funding was four hundred and fifty dollars don donated by attendance at the Natural Building Colloquium for non uh, for the nonprofit application fee. And and then the Cobb Code five hundred one C three nonprofit application was successful. After that, we formed CRI and learned to become an organization. Then I developed a CRI budget uh, at the UCB, University of California Earthquake Research Center. Prices had changed in the intervening years and the cost was now $500,000. And then we began CRI research to compile existing Cobb technical literature. And then in 2017, I published an interim Cobb technical white paper in the, at the Earth USA 2017 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. In 2018 and 2019, I had the opportunity to collaborate with engineer and fellow CRI board member, Anthony Dente, to design this small UCB permitted Cobb structure. This was the Big Ben's Hot Spring Welcome Hut. It was the first CBC permitted habitable structure in California. As I said, it was by me, John Fordyce and Anthony Dente, our engineer, and it advanced our understanding of Cobb design. With a fully functioning organization, CRE was finally ready in 2016 to create a Cobb building code. Wall testing in collaboration with two universities had been done and was used in support of the code's structural specifications. The code syntax was modeled after the recently successful straw bale and light clay codes. It is a prescriptive appendix to the International Residential Code and is accompanied by a written commentary. The two documents are the work of Martin Hammer and Anthony Dente and many supporting Cobb and building experts. Submitted and approved by the ICC to, by the ICC for its 2019 code cycle, it will be available as a model code for adoption by US jurisdictions in 2021. This is the realization of a long pursued dream. The work does not stop with this initial success Plans are already underway for additional research towards broadening and refinement for the 2022 code cycle. This is to virtual, visual, visually introduce to you the dedicated group of volunteers who have brought the Cobb code into reality. Cobb and the future owe them a debt of gratitude. This is a set of three prototype passive solar cob residence designs being produced to facilitate cob or wildfire replacement homes and to promote the use and growth of legal cob permitted cob construction. 